just about record time setting that up then I reckon that was pretty good um, quick one today good news good news guys I'll get on with the subject of the video first though um, in my last talking head video just having a chat to you guys so I read out a question somebody wanting loud subtitles on my videos there's a way to do it there is a way to do it without me doing any work I'm gonna show you now let's go it really is as simple as doing this select yourself a video right up. there we go settings click on settings go to subtitles click on English auto generated okay now and it gets out of it now go back into subtitles and it will give you the option come, come down to auto translate we're in English now so if I didn't change anything it would be coming up in English subtitles but we want to change that to another language and there will give you it's gonna say a shit ton there is there is but there's not all the languages in the world of course but they do have Lao now so select Lao but to give you a look, here we go. Arab. Would that be active or not, mate? There you go. So it it understands me. This Even YouTube understands me. <laughs> Whether that's correct or not, I don't know. But I did show Nunu, and well, yeah, she was able to understand it. So there you go. Easy and as, well, easy well, as, well, guys. Well. How easy is that? Oh, a big thank you to. I gotta find him. I got. I gotta find him, and I gotta thank the dude. Just don't know who he was. Messaged me out of the blue. Knew exactly what he was. What he was talking about. Um. Okay, that's strange. I cannot find him, but I do remember his first name and the first few letters of his second name. It was Sven. Sven. S V E N. And his last name started with Sven also, so I'm I'm guessing it's Sven Svensson. Would that be right? Anyway, I think that he is in Thailand. He reached out to me to let me know that you can you can do it. So big thanks to you, dude. Um, he did point me in the direction of the Google Translation app too. Sorry about the shadows, guys. I, I am a bit later in the day doing this video than I normally am. So this Google Translation app, for a long time, Google did not have... I'm going to sit somewhere else so you can bloody see me, hey. Oh, how's that in me eyes? Trying to get that tree lined up. There we go. That's pretty good. That'll do. That'll do. For a long time, Google did not have Lao in its um, languages to translate. They do now, they do now, but there is it, there is a catch. I'll open up the app. Where is it? It's this little one here, the Google Translate sucker. That's it. Focus back on me, thank you. It's it there, it's got a camera option to give you an idea. I'll sit here, sit here. And look at this guys, a bit of magic. Is that is that coming up on your screen? That turns that English card into Lao that would be freaking awesome if I could read Lao it doesn't do it the other way so it is a work in progress I think so it is worth getting it does translate Lao um, English into Lao at the moment it doesn't translate um, Lao text to English for us for, from text or voice or camera. So it's strictly at the moment um, English to Lao. So hopefully soon it will be Lao to English. We'll be able to speak into it. How the bloody hell are you? And you know, it'll just say Ben Jung Day, you know, telling us how to speak in Lao. Thanks for. <laughs> Thanks, Sven. Good man. Okay, um, back to the back to the video. Good news. Good news. Um, 
got the drone, got the drone. Check the video out, <laughs> guys. Check the vid. Uh, this is my first, very first flight. No special edits, nothing like that. Just getting used to the um, the new controller. Uh, it's pretty much the same. So much smoother. It goes so much further. Um, but it was just mainly to see the distance, yeah, you know, and just to see how good the quality in that was. So here's a look round, just around our neighbourhood here, and going up over the temples towards St. Phila Con Conference Hall, yeah, and Convention Hall. Sorry, Simon. So I'm busting a nut at the moment to get videos ahead of time. Me and Nene just found out a couple of days ago uh, we got a family wedding down in Puxay. So we'll be heading down there on the 27th or 28th. Probably staying at Savannah Kit on the way down overnight and then driving on to Puxay the next, the next day. It won't be a travel trip taking in lots of things we may i may record some things no doubt no no will you know what she's like but um maybe one maybe two videos that do eventuate out of this trip you know just everything just compressed into uh a couple of videos because it was only february this year we went down and done our big southern trip savannah kept puxy four thousand islands at a pool and tadlock and Road 23. Most memorable part of that trip, I think. So, that is why I'm busting a nut to get videos in front so you guys aren't missing out on any uploads. I'm on schedule at the moment. It's all good. I, I should have it worked out so you won't even know I'm gone and I'm bludging and doing nothing and on the piss down at this wedding. Um, speaking of wedding, on our way back, we'll more than likely, be, uh, the wedding's on the 31st, coming back and I'm stopping in a Puxan on the way home. There's an expat there, Chris Perkins. He's often in the comments correcting me on shit I'm always stumbling over and getting slightly a bit wrong. I'm not going to say I'm wrong, but <laughs> he's very helpful. Great bloke. He's been here for 14 years. A whinge and pom from the, uh, from the UK. I, I do say that with a lot of love, Chris, and to any other whinge and poms out there watching. Um, been here for 14 years. Uh, Travelled extensively in 72, 73. Um, lived in New Zealand. He's lived in a lot of places. So, gonna catch up with him, have a couple of tasty beverages, and ask him some questions. Why has he been in Laos? 14 years. You know, what's he done here? What's he think of Laos? Um, why? Then the biggest question, why? Why Laos? So, um, help me out. Help me out, guys. That will be coming up um, early on in November, that video. But get those questions in now so I am prepared when I see him on the way back from Puxi. Puxan's probably, oh, it's a couple of hour drive from here. So it's sort of a bit too far out of my way just to go for a day trip and interview this fella. But I've been meaning to get over his place. He's got a um, nice little farm there. Uh, and 
an eco-friendly type farm so we'll, we'll have a look around that check it out and Nini can interview his missus there's an idea so questions for Chris questions for Chris you know whatever you, whatever you like what did he do in the UK before he come here you know has he only got one wife or has he got eight I don't know. That was in reference to my Vung Pao um, video I done recently, if you're wondering why I said that. Alright, uh, back to the questions. How's that drone footage going? I stuffed up too. I stuffed up. Luckily, it um, it's got internal storage now. The old Spark didn't, but it's only got eight gig of internal storage. And I was I was getting very familiar with it when I got back home here, doing a few donuts around the the restaurant and that, but it didn't capture it because the internal footage filled up the eight gig. It was recorded in 4K. I usually record in 1080. You guys don't notice the difference most of the time. So, um, very disappointing when I didn't get the doughies in the car park. Right, uh, Lao Subtitles. Tick showed you guys that. Chris Perkins catching up with you very, uh, very early November. We're probably coming home the next day, mate, but I'll be in touch with you. Puxy, eh? new drone. That's it. That's it. Yes. You want me fine? Yeah. Here, come and get it. Come on. They won't scare you. You can say hello. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. That's it. Um, you're not even going to know I'm gone. I am, I am in front with the videos at the moment, so hopefully everything goes well on the way down to Puxy. Um, probably no more talking heads or daily life videos until then. I will just concentrate on the footage I've got now, the, tra the travel videos. Um, we're wanting to get away as soon as travel opens back up in Laos too, because uh, we have do have a big trip planned. We want to go right up to the furthest reaches of northern Lao hopefully before Christmas you know end of November December and capture a shit ton of video because as we all know the world is slowly starting to open back up and as soon as um, flight costs permit and the zero quarantine status returning to Australia I really want to get back to Oz to uh, visit my granddaughter who was over, who turned one in August 22nd. I still have not met her because of COVID. So before we do travel to Australia, but we want to do this big trip so we can keep editing while we are away, keep uploading videos for you guys and in at the same time doing uh capturing a lot of our australian trip 
I'll be going down to Tasmania to visit my daughter and that. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're talking about... Geez, I'd, I'd like to be there by around March, March, yeah. But big trips here that me and Nene do, we can get nearly six months of editing out of. And you guys think we're just on the road for that amount of time. That's funny, eh? That's funny. So many people say, oh, you should, you should stop in here while you're there. Sorry, dude. That was five months ago. But we're, we're, we're uploading this one pretty quick, even though we were on the road only. When did we leave for the middle hour tour? The one you're watching now, where he is at, Pong Chang. I uh, just left Long Chang. We started that trip on August the 10th and had to cut it short. We cut it short at halfway, about 15, 15 days into it. Yeah, about the 25th, 26th, we returned home, August. So that's getting towards the end of October now, so that's two months ago. I've still probably got another month or two months of editing to go, you know, but with these travel trips it doesn't necessarily have to be within that week, you know. It's mainly highlighting the areas we go to and the, uh, how the people live. Um, and that is why I do break these videos up with the, like these talk and head videos and our daily life walking tour videos around Vientiane. Um, to be current, to let you guys know what the situation in Laos is like in this week. You know, so otherwise, you know, if it was just strictly all travel videos, it would be six months before you got to to know what was going on in this, um, in Vientiane, where we're living, what's happening right now. Also, I, I do like throwing in these everyday videos, it's ju just to break up the monotony of just doing the same type of video over and over and over again. As much as I love uh, doing, putting the extra effort into my travel videos, it's just like having a break when I throw something else in like this. Uh, it's It just breaks up the, mon the monotony of it, like I said. I'm repeating myself now. Did you cut out on me? I, I was rambling on then and didn't even know you were off. And I went to turn you off and it's come back on. How good's that drone footage, hey? How smooth is that? I'm going to have to compare it with what the 1080p looks like now. If there's not much of a difference and I don't notice it much. See, I've got a 4K laptop, so I'll be able to notice the difference. And if there's not that much difference in it, I'm just going to continue to record in 1080 because um, you only need quarter of the size file space memory space recording in 4k the files are four times bigger you know and you need bigger memory cards bigger hard drives to save all that shit you, it's it does cost a lot in the long run so if it's only just for a smidgen of um improvement you'd be surprised how many people think i um, i upload in 4k on some of the videos anyway just the quality of it batteries flashing catch you later see you around